at Smethwick Council House to try and find a very important plaque. And this is a plaque to Lieutenant Den Rutheridge, who was the first British soldier to be killed in action on D-Day. And it says it was a classic display of courageous leadership for which he paid with his life. We went to Pegasus Bridge to find out what happened. This is Pegasus Bridge, one of the most important places in British history. It was early in the morning on the 6th of June 1944 that this cafe became the first building to be liberated by the airborne forces. Within yards of the bridge, gliders came in and landed around here. Major John Howard, along with Lieutenant Brotheridge and 28 other soldiers, landed on this spot here and his objective to take over the bridge was completed within 10 minutes. Sadly, Brotheridge left his glider and was shot in the back of the neck whilst leading his men across the bridge. The owner of the cafe at Pegasus Bridge is Madame Arlay Gondre. Her parents ran the cafe at the time of the invasion. We presented her with a DVD of an interview that we filmed with her earlier this year in Birmingham. She is the patron of the Birmingham branch of the Normandy Veterans Association and we met her at the annual service in June this year at St Paul's Church in the Jewelry Quarter. And she lived in the first house that was liberated by the British in Normandy. It's the mission of the British as a whole, never Dutch as my one man. It was done by a team effort of so many heroes who took part. Had not succeeded, we would have been shot or taken to concentration camps. So that's the reason why from the 5th and 6th of June 1944, I have been a great lover of all these young men who risked their lives. This is at the local church at Benneville and the churchyard contains 23 Commonwealth War graves. Most of the graves contain bodies of men who were in the 6th Airborne Division who landed by parachute at the bridge. 19 of the 23 died on D-Day itself. We must keep the memories alive.